hard to switch your mind from only training. You push at home, but it's never like a proper race. The level is growing and getting higher and higher. I broke my two collarbone and I don't race two years ago. You ask yourself what I can do to, uh, to be the, uh, the best. El competir es una manera de, de ponerte al día, ¿no? Vamos, el mínimo error se paga muy caro. Maybe I just need to calm down, relax a little bit. Each time you get to this state of mind, it feels like first time. <laughs> and that's why the racing is so much fun. Let's go for a house tour. Let's see all the rooms, what we got. So we got one friend size bed here. There are two for kids. I think Gabby Edgar should sleep here. We got a whole big dining room here. Master chef, Jana. How was the road? Good. <laughs> Long. This season we start with training camp in Andorra. Uh, actually, this was the first time we meet. We gather a whole team together, except Evan Wall, because he is from Canada and it's quite tricky still to, for him to travel to Europe. Uh, the main reason of the camp was to, to see how uh, logistically will work everything in the team because the team this year is uh, really huge. Of course, beside this, uh, the riders test the material, uh, work with mechanics really close and uh, try to figure the, the latest details before the Enduro World Series kickoff. <laughs> El Team Camp siempre viene bien hacerlo a principio de temporada porque permite a los corredores modificar la bici, la posición, acostumbrarse a las reacciones, probar diferentes settings en distintos terrenos para ver qué va bien en un sitio, qué va bien en otro, muelle, aire cubiertas, tamaños de ruedas, diferentes platos para pedalear más fuerte o menos fuerte, bueno, pues para hacer todo lo que ellos quieran, para conocer la bici y sus reacciones, para cuando llegue en la carrera saber en cada terreno cómo va a funcionar mejor. Gracias, Jorge. Consigo aguantar bien el ritmo hasta abajo. Mal aquí, yo en el céntrico allí. So try to, to remember some parts you will feel either smooth or the bike will be crazy. The <laughs> first race is always that one which is maybe the most uh, critical from the mental point. Watch out this one. Mm. This would be really <laughs> slick. I, I have a lot of motivation but a lot of stress and question, you know. Where, where I am, contrary to the other. When you don't race since a long time, when you get back, it's like, it's crazy because it's like your first race ever, you know? We've reached a point in which everything is so tight that we have to take care of every detail and the minimum error is very expensive. 
it was uh, kind of hard to find the, the sharp edge, you know, how far to push. I'm just happy to racing, so let's do it. And then at, in between three and six, like around four and five, it's gonna rain like pouring rain. The very first stage was um, really tough because of the condition. It was just wet, steep. No, no, de nada fluido. Tuvo una caída. I crash. Uh, on the first corner <laughs> and uh, after my uh, handlebar was uh, like this and I tried to, to re-put this in the good uh, way but uh, no. <laughs> well, okay, let's try it like this. It suits me really well. It's super steep, super technical and yeah, this, this is just my kind of riding. Just one mistake, like I went almost over the bar. I save it a little bit with the grips out, but it's good, it's good crack here, I love it. We're gonna check the track to see what, uh, what uh, tires we're gonna choose for the race, because uh, last, time, last night was raining really bad. If you dig, you come to the dry. I think if we go on dry tires, we're going to be better on the stage four because it's all open, so it's going to be dry. And uh, dry tires rolling uh, faster, so I think it's going to be better. But on this one, maybe we're going to have some trouble with dry tires because it's grass and dirt. So it's going to be slippery, but we have to <laughs> we have to decide. Uh, I think we have more time to gain on the stage four with dry tire than on this one with a uh, with mid one. So I think I will go on dry one. The first race, I'm not sure if I'm like super more relaxed because it's it's pretty epic to see like how tight is everything. But that makes it even more interesting and like it makes you even more eager to push. That was good. Pretty rough. I had a smooth run. Hope it's fast. It's a rough time on that stage. The rest was good. It's just devastating to make such a stupid mistake. So you run a flat corner and just went down pretty bad. Second day, I managed to get with more flow, more rapid, and remount positions. But in general, I'm happy. Con, con el segundo día sobre todo, el primero fue un desastre, pero, pero contento, viendo que, que las cosas pueden salir muy bien. Five crash on the first, the second, it's hard, and the last mechanical problem, and... Okay, go home, go sleep, go eat, next race. <laughs> At the start, I was uh, really focused to, to get back to top 10. I knew uh, I was capable of it. Savage, man. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy because the top was pretty dry. It's, uh, there's no tree up there. And then when you go into the forest, you arrive so fast and there was plenty of like sleepy woods, so 
Yeah, it was sketchy, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it more, more than yesterday, so I'm, I'm happy with my ride. My last thing was like, hey, go for it. And if you crash here, you will crash, but if you like, think about it and don't crash and try to be safe, you will not be on the top 10. So it was full on and uh, yeah, the crash, it went, it went away. Ya hemos llegado a la Tuil, siguiente destino de las Enduro World Series y estamos preparando las bicis para que puedan salir por la tarde a entrenar los corredores. We have this week uh, in between the races, between Kanadze and Latuil. It's really good because you don't get many chances, um, especially not in those times, to train with the fastest guys and to learn from them. We are going to be able to adapt very well to the terreno, which is where we are going to run the week y también pues para no sé, hacer vida más en común con todo el equipo ya que este año no hemos tenido la oportunidad de estar mucho juntos Coffee and cycling goes like. We go fast this one. Run, run, forest, run. I think we will need to go for more trolley. Slovenia, you know, just beside this is France. What's France? This is the best country. Sin contar España, podría decir que es el segundo, ¿no? En Francia no tenéis paella, solo tenéis arroz de pobres. <laughs> Under the Mont Blanc to do the interval session. So it's gonna be probably the best interval session you ever see. And after, guys, after. We're gonna go all the way up. It's up there. We got... Damien, can you explain me what we're gonna do? We're gonna die. Today it's interval day. No, my objective today is not other than to show Damien that I have legs to win. Oh, we have to get the Gabi was unable to follow me. He was struggling a little bit. No funciona bien. I think uh, we are a classic example of 21st century people going up one of the highest peaks with the gondola. Not really proud of it, but I think uh, every now and then you need to be a little bit of tourist. So we live on the edge all the time, and I think this experience will show us how ordinary people can get to the highest point of the mountain. 
Ahora ya estamos más altos que la neto. I would describe our team like a mix of everything. Soy en el equipo hay caracteres super distintos, ¿no? Pero que al fin y al cabo creo que todos nos complementamos para para estar muy a gusto y estar sentirnos como en casa. I was so excited to meet the team, but I was a little bit scared because it's my first year on the big team. But yeah, good welcome, and I directly. Part of the team. Fast and fast. Wow. Yeah, this year with the team, uh, we are quite a big structure. It's a big advantage because you can have uh, a lot of people to speak with. You can share different opinions, and you can gain a lot of uh, good things. And you can grow as a rider. And also as a racer. There is four language difference. Ahora mismo somos el equipo más grande que hay en las Andrew World Series. Y nada, yo creo que eso por por un lado puede parecer así un poco caótico y loco, pero yo creo que si las cosas se hacen bien, que es como pienso que se están haciendo, pues nada, puede ser muy bueno para todos el tener más corredores los que aprender, con los que convivir y y al fin y al cabo todo eso te enriquece, ¿no? Para para ser un mejor rider. Día a día, bueno, mejor rider y mejor persona, al fin y al cabo. I don't know. I think I lost a little bit on the setting side. I don't know why. Like maybe I just need to calm down and relax a little bit. Bueno, pues vamos a, a buscar un camino que sea bastante variado para intentar ajustar las suspensiones para este tipo de terreno. Bueno, a ver si, si se queda a gusto porque si no va a salir rayada la carrera. I think I'm still learning a lot. Like, wow, every time I feel that I I figure out the game of enduro and stuff. It always like kicks me back and sends me back to the practice. You know, it's a never-ending game. That's why sport is always fun. Um, you keep learning and keep doing, keep improving stuff. Me. I like it. Not sure if it's the fastest, but it's the most fun and most comfortable setup yeah, so far. The, you the, know. More, the, the more complex for you. Yeah, to it's. I, I felt really good riding this. Really good. And this is the best part of the job working with Kavi. <laughs> he always has a game plan. Birthday girl. You feel it? You feel older? Oh yeah. Yeah? It's hard to wake up this morning. Yeah. I have a lot of... Uh, oh. You almost feel like Primoz. Yeah. <laughs> hey, imagine, imagine. It's very hard. <laughs> Tough life. Hey, but you gain wisdom. 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 No. I think you gain wisdom, no? No. What is wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> So clean. Yeah. Clean from, from today's ago.
friend Ulis and the guys from the Bluegrass, they got a surprise for us in the grill. So we are about to find out what it is. We're gonna make the unboxing with the rock. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Perfect fit. <laughs> Actually, it's light for us. Mm. How big it is. I like this stuff that it's not moving. It's like fixed with position. <laughs> Ready for racing? Yeah. We're going for service at the Fox Pit to get everything uh, jallet for the race. Sitting, low speed compression, low speed rebound, everything uh, you had that you can, uh, you sure that they they will put back the, the same uh, same sitting. Cool, cool. We'll get it serviced up. Maybe a couple of hours. ¿Y tú por qué llevas la GoPro? Para que lo vean los colegas. <risa> Ahora hay que, hay que buscar líneas por ahí como un zorrillo. <risa> que estar siempre atento porque, va, sobre todo en el enduro van saliendo líneas por ahí que, que luego puedes ver en la tarde. A lo mejor se te escapan o lo que sea. Y bueno, como no, coger referencias y tal, como solo pasamos una vez por cada circuito, pues, pues eso, en la GoPro buscamos referencias para acordarnos de cosas y tal, donde hay que frenar, donde hay que soltar el freno, y es donde van puliéndose algunos segundos. Cosa te enseñé, eh? This is the last stage, no, but be careful about the railer. Yo creo que lo tengo. Sí. Para allá a ver. Making a good warm-up to wake up your body, to wake up your mind. Uh, I think this is one thing that uh, helped me the most on the race day. Um, so that's why I try to, to take maybe 15 to 20 minutes up in the morning um, and do it, you know, like on a quiet place. I take my mattress and I take some elastics and stuff and I do this uh, warm up by myself. Every time pretty much the same with some specific exercises we choose for, for biking. And this is one thing that, um, yeah, that wakes me up and helps me to get in the race mode a little bit more. The stages here in Natural uh, was super good, super fun to ride, fast, contrary to Canazei. The stage three, it's my favorite. Okay, go. I go to the stage three and I have a good 
good start on the stage three. And BIM! I broke a spoke on my wheel and I have flat tire in one second at the middle of the track and I say, oh no. <laughs> I tried to push until the finish line and this stage was, was not too bad. Bueno, la primera la verdad que me sentí cachadísimo, no, no me encontraba para nada. Tuve con un, un poco de dolor de muela, tengo la muela de juicio ahí que me está avisando. Y, y bueno, estaba tomando antibióticos y tal y me encuentro un poco, un poco raro. Vamos a la especial 3. Bueno, bastante técnica, tiene bastantes líneas y tal. Y bueno, así lo puedo tener todo en cuenta y que salga fina. Ah, OP. Super fast and slippery, so <laughs> easy to go off the track. Yeah, the race was not too bad until the rain came. Stage three, I, uh, we got the rain at the top. I knew it would be tough because it was the, the fastest one and uh, I think one of the, the most technical too. Then I had a, a good crash at the, at the bottom. No, no acabé bien gustado con el resultado. Parece que corría en barro y con, con todas las raíces mojadas y tal, que tal vez es donde menos cómodo me siento. Y acabé el 35, así que contento. After uh, actually a rough starting, can I say, after the first two races, coming to this one was a hard one, you know. Like my bike, uh, I didn't really feel the best on my bike, so we spent all week testing the suspension and setting the bike and yeah, I just didn't know what to expect. I know, I felt a little bit slow, so I was still trying to figure out how much grip is here. After the first stage, I was actually a little bit devastated and yeah, I just said, I need to go and try to ride fast, just fast, I need speed, that's it, you know. There is no messing around here. I just hit it really hard. I started to ride like myself again. And it was probably the first time this season that I felt insane on the bike. Like I could feel the bike behind me or in front of me. It was just doing its job and I was just following the, the track, going fast. So it was a pretty insane feeling in the end. En cada prueba de las Enduro World Series, nuestro trabajo consiste en poner las bicis a punto para que el corredor siempre vaya con la bici perfecta, lo más a su gusto y estilo posible en función del terreno que hay. Durante todo el día revisamos las bicis para que al día siguiente, bien sean entrenos o bien sea carrera, el corredor ya la tenga exactamente como él la quiere tener para la prueba y a las mañanas cuando llegan simplemente es poner presiones de ruedas, de suspensiones de horquilla, chequear de que todo está bien como se dejó de la noche anterior y nada, el corredor sale a calentar, 
vuelve a decirnos, vuelve al paddock a decirnos si está todo bien o si hay algún pequeño cambio que quiere hacer y ya se va a los entrenos o a la carrera. Y cuando vuelve, tanto de entrenos o de carrera, pues limpiamos las bicis, desmontamos todo, limpiamos todos los puntos de giro, rodamientos, vemos si hay holguras, juegos, desgastes, roturas y lo reparamos para que al día siguiente la bici vuelva a estar perfecta como a ellos les gusta encontrarse. The day started pretty rough for me, like um, especially yesterday with the crash. And then I was on the hunt. I tried to push really hard first two stages, but I obviously pushed a little bit too harder, so I missed a lot of lines. But after that, I just said. Um, I'm gonna try to go even faster, but try to keep my lines and just focus on the, on the track and on my riding. So yeah, the last two stages were pretty good. That stage nine, I didn't expect that. Yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this, this whole week. We made a huge progress from the last two races, so I'm positive for the next part of the season. Looking forward to smash it again. Hemos una limpieza la transmisión y algo raro en la bici. No. Vale, pues limpiamos la transmisión. Cuidado con las pegatinas de las ruedas que no vuelan. Y buen ritmo encima de las raíces. En comparación con ayer, ayer me costó bastante más. Ayer notaba que iba rápido, pero las curvas me atrancaban bastante. Pero bueno, contento. Oye, poco a poco escalando posiciones. At first it was painful because I had a big crash yesterday and my knee was like ah. But uh, when the guys at the top say uh, five, four, three, like all the pain's gone. Dry, slippery, dry, slippery. <laughs> so it is hard to get there with a good rhythm. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, until the two last one, I have a mechanical problem. The chain went off uh, a few times.
Good. Yeah. My bike is in one piece. For the moment. Okay. I was a little bit slowly. I had a lot of mistakes, stupid mistakes. I don't know why. I, I find I think a lot and I need to just have fun of my bike and don't, not think about the result. And I think it's the keys, but it's easy to say and not easy to do on the bike. Sí, en la curva me pasé entrando y se retorció la cubierta. Gracias. Es el día de los pinchazos, chavales. Buena, tío. Ver rabia, ¿sabes? Cuando estás ahí, yeah. te lo digo, pollo. Es pinchado y todo. Más que esto que es inhumano. Pero nada, ya. Yeah. ¿Perdiste mucho, crees? No sé, yo me tiro a fondo igual. Así mantuve, me mantuve yendo a fondo, y pinchado de todo y, y bueno, acabé el 30, que va, bueno, contentísimo, sobre todo por cómo me encuentro, porque no sabía, ya saben que es la primera carrera que corro este año. Bueno, voy motivadísimo a la siguiente.